to move um, what would have been over at St. Peter's Grove indoors. And so the liturgies, well, we just made some adjustments out there and we'll make some adjustments on the fly too. But we'll start with the prayer, we'll start with the invocation and we'll end with the benediction and whatever happens in the middle happens in the middle. Uh, I have sung uh, Camp Mount Luther's liturgy. It's been a long time. We'll get through it. There are some things that uh, you need to be aware of. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Dot. Where is Dot? The Dot. There she is. Thank you for the bread this morning. Um, next Sunday is the back to school and a commissioning Sunday here in the church. We are beginning to gather water and uh, gator aid for uh, Fayette Fire Company. Please bring that in. Mike, or is Michael here? Are we doing Bible? Are we doing? Yeah, we'll figure that out later. Mike Ryan is in the, continues to be in the hospital. Please send him cards and keep him in your prayers. And Phyllis Weller has in the, uh, uh, had a broken foot, and she needs her our prayers and her and some cards too. Are there other things that we need to be aware of this morning as we gather for worship? How'd he fall, Harry? I don't know. We fell into the water. I was concerned, too, because I thought maybe he went down in the water. Yeah. Down. And he had just a couple days before that, fell down in the water. Yeah. So, oh, good. good. Okay. Harry Leister, Clarice's brother, fell. Is, she, is he on the prayer list? Okay, good. Others? <laughs> If not, I ask you to rise and we'll begin with the call to worship. <clears throat> Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God and God has made us. We are God's people and the sheep of God's fields. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The light breaks over the mountains, and it opens our new day. That's like the living Word of God, Jesus Christ. He comes to us and makes all things new. Lord God, lead us forward in the new life you are giving us. Open our eyes to see your presence and your love around each corner and at all things great and small. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. <laughs> worship the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness. You're supposed to help me. <laughs> worship the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness. Call upon God's holy name. Worship the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness. Call upon God's holy name. God alone gives life and living. Worship God alone. In breath and breeze, God's love is flowing. Gifts of God alone. Set, set false things, nah. set false things away forever. Worship God alone. Draw our hearts in love's strong tether. Gifts of God alone. Christ the body, Christ the soul. Worship God alone. Crack your shell, meet neighbors whole. Gifts of God alone. Grass and ravens, fire and flower. Worship God alone. 
in small things and mighty powers. Gifts of God alone. Worship the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness. Call upon God's holy name. Worship the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness. Call upon God's holy name. Let us pray. Ever loving God, <clears throat> Your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity, and live, and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. We'll read Psalm 34 responsively. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Our second reading this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 5. Be careful then how you live not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Okay, children, wanna, I don't know what that was. Children want to join me? <coughs> What's your favorite game? Hmm? What do you like to play? What? Golf? You like to play golf? Did you? Oh. How well, how do you play it? Do you play it really well? Do you? Chuck, we got competition. <laughs> What's your favorite game? What do you like to play? Baseball, basketball? Baseball? What? Oh, soccer. Oh, yeah, cool. What's your favorite game? Soccer. Do you have one? Oh, soccer. Yeah, I like to play golf. I like to play golf. We just heard um, a reading from the book of Proverbs. A little later in that book, not too much later. Proverbs talks about integrity. Big word. One of the reasons, I will get back to that in a second. One of the reasons that I like to play golf is because it's a game of integrity that is most of the time, not all the time, 
but most of the time people who play golf are honest. That's just the way the game is. Now, it is easy to cheat in golf. Like if you hit your ball off to the side and nobody's around, you could take your foot and just sort of move the ball out so it's not in one of those big deep grass things. And chances are nobody's going to see that you did that. So you can, it's easy to cheat. Or here's the other thing. You keep your own score. How about that? There's a joke that when you're playing golf, you hit six, holler four, and write down five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you can cheat. So, integrity. Integrity is what we do when nobody's looking. How about that? Like, if we're set, told no cookies before supper, but there's nobody there by the cookie jar except you, could probably sneak a cookie, huh? Integrity is what we do when nobody's looking. Or maybe we drop something and break it, but we don't say anything. Now, we might think we get away with cheating at golf, or we might think that we get away from, get away with doing something we're not supposed to do when nobody's looking. But you and I know that's not right. And you and I know that that's not true. We don't get away with it. Sooner or later, we're going to get caught. But more importantly, you're never alone. So somebody else is with us, even when we think we're alone. And that's God. So between you and God, you know you cheated, right? Integrity, tough word. But we're reminded this morning, I think, to be careful about what we do even when nobody's looking, we still want to do the thing that is right and honest and fair. Sound like a good deal? Okay, let's pray. We thank you, God, for giving us wisdom and reminding us about integrity. Help us to be your people just as we always are when, when we are in public Help us to be the same person when we are alone. We give you our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. See you later. Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. For the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So, yeah, we were on Interstate 80 for a long time. 
all the way through Indiana, all the way through Ohio, halfway through Pennsylvania. And you know there are always signs that say, next exit, Starbucks. <laughs> we didn't generally stop unless it said Starbucks. We, we went, on, went on. Or there's always signs that tell you what restaurants are, are available at this exit, what lodging's available, gas. You get a pretty good idea where you want to stop. However, there's some folks, some establishments that holler out at you. McDonald's. They put their arches way up in the air, right by the exit, don't they? Yep. Say, come on, here's where you want to stop. You want to get into McDonald's. Starbucks does the same thing. There was a big sign for Starbucks. We are invited, we are encouraged to get off the road and get a bite to eat and maybe change drivers. Have a little rest. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her several pillars. It's not just any old house. It's a big, wealthy house. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. Sort of like sign on the interstate. Turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come eat of my bread, drink of the wine I have mixed, lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Proverbs is one of the books that is lumped together in the Old Testament in a way that we call wisdom literature. Wisdom is personified as a female, probably only because the Old Testament word for wisdom is a female noun. But in any case, she's always she. She sends out her maidens to make these calls to, to entice people to come and to be a part of wisdom, of wisdom. This wisdom, it's kind of an interesting thing. Wisdom is not something that is just particularly Jewish or Christian, but it's knowing how to live life and to live it well. It's knowing the kinds of things that are good for us and good for the community, good for all of us, as opposed to the things that hurt us. Things that may be just as attractive as the good stuff, but in the end are hurtful. There was another sign <coughs> that June and I both took notice of. It was blatant. It was right by the side of the road. It was an adult store. Hollers just as loudly as the Starbucks sign. The other side of wisdom is folly. And Proverbs, in just a little bit past this reading, talks about folly, who also calls us to come. But wisdom says, no, no. 
We need to do and be attracted to the things that are good for us and good for a community, even in the midst of other kinds of, other kinds of callings, other kinds of invitations in our world today. We may argue sometimes about what are the good things for us to have and to do. But I think in the end that you and I know pretty well what are the good things for us to do and the good things for us to be a part of. That's what wisdom is. That's what we are invited to this morning. Now, the other thing that I want to kind of connect here is how wisdom, in this case, invites us to be a part of that good life. She builds a house. She slaughters her animals. She mixes her wine. She makes her bread. She lays out a feast and says, come and eat. Come and eat. I think it is no accident that Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Come and eat my flesh, which is kind of a weird idea. But that's what Jesus invites us to also, to this great and marvelous feast in which he is joined to us and we are joined to him. Every Sunday, we come here and we are invited to come to this table where the feast is plentiful. We are invited to come to this table and to be a part of Jesus and have Jesus to be a part of us. That's a smart thing for us to do. That's a wise thing for us to do, to constantly be in touch with this Jesus and having this Jesus come to us in a very real way, in his flesh, in his body, in his blood, and says, here I am. Come and feast on me always, and I will give you life. Just as this wisdom says, come and be wise and have life. So Jesus says to us, come, eat my body, drink my blood, and I will give you life. And I think it's life now and as well as life eternal. Our participating in this feast means that this Jesus goes with us all the time out there in our world. And we can make decisions that are good decisions. We can live lives that are good lives. We can be wise in our world. God comes to us with very enticing invitations. Come, says our God. Come and be with me. Come and I will be with you. And that is a good life. Amen. <clears throat>
the hem is on this green insert. I'm not sure how this next part works. <laughs> Let's um, just read the litany of thanksgiving and forgiveness together, and then we'll sing the peace in our time at the end of that. Creator God, we thank you for the gift of this earth and the blessings of each day. We praise you for the forests, the fields, and the waters, which remind us of your sustaining power. We give thanks for the nurturing nature of the spirit and for your love and endless grace. May the Spirit guide us through our journeys as we keep growing in thankfulness to you, in thoughtfulness toward others, and in openness to the future. We ask for your forgiveness as we remember the sacrifice of your only Son. Grant that we may never forget the work done on the cross. Pardon our wrongdoings and help us turn from evil and sinful ways. Be ever present, O God, and keep us in your kindly care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace in our time, give us peace. Peace in our time, give us peace. Peace in our time, O Lord, have mercy. Remember our days. Remember our days, remember our days, and tell our children we sing. Peace in our time, give us peace. Peace in our time, give us peace. Peace in our time, O oh Lord, have mercy. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <coughs> Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. O oh Lord, have mercy. Wisdom has mixed her wine. 
May the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve the Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. O oh Lord, have mercy. Wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit of care to all who seek healing and comfort, especially Harry, Raymond, Mike, Phyllis, Barry, Joanne, Dwayne, Carl, and Kathy, and all others we now name. O Lord, have mercy. Wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. O Lord, have mercy. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her paths, looking toward a bright future while remembering from where we have come. We give our thanks for those who have gone before us. Comfort us who mourn. O oh Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The offering plates will not be uh, passed this morning, but I encourage you to uh, place your offering um, in the narthex. Let us rise for the dialogue. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and healthy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. And here in this place, where your word is taught and heard and treasured, where your people hear the voice of your son, just as he once spoke by a lake on the hillsides and on the roads, so too we are welcomed into his presence. As he walks near us, our hearts burn within, for he opens to us and is the word of life. And so with the church on earth and all the community of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray the prayer that our Lord teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
This is the body of Christ broken for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the refreshment you have given us here. We go from Christ's presence into Christ's presence as we walk forward in your world and finally home to you. We are beacons and reminders of your grace, helpers and comforters in your love, and courageous witness of your truth among all with whom we travel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The Lord direct our day and our deeds in God's peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>